With normal abduction of the shoulder, the upper limb is moved away from the body while keeping the thumb up. The normal range of motion is between 150 and 180 degrees. The ratio of the glenohumeral joint motion to the scapulothoracic joint motion is 2 to 1 during abduction. When checking the shoulder flexion, move the arm in front of the body 180 degrees. External rotation or lateral rotation has a normal range of motion of about 90 degrees. There are two ways to check external rotation of the shoulder. The first way is to bend the elbow to 90 degrees and swing the forearm away from the body. Shoulder external rotation is similar to opening a cabinet door. The second way to check external rotation is to abduct and externally rotate the upper limb to 90 degrees. Internal rotation or medial rotation has a normal range of motion of about 70 to 90 degrees. There are three ways to check internal rotation of the shoulder. The first way is done by bending the elbow to 90 degrees, then swinging the elbow inward, similar to closing a cabinet door. The second way to check the internal rotation is done by abducting and internally rotating the upper limb to 90 degrees. And with the third way to check internal rotation, the maximum internal rotation is measured on the basis of the highest spinal process level that can be reached by the thumb. Always check the range of motion actively and passively. Always differentiate the true shoulder joint motion from the scapulothoracic motion. Measure the internal and external motion bilaterally and compare the total arc of rotation. The most common cause of painful limitation of the shoulder is from adhesive capsulitis. Adhesive capsulitis is a painful, progressive loss of shoulder motion that affects both active and passive movement of the shoulder joint. The shoulder is stiff and painful, and the condition occurs to inflammation, fibrosis, scarring, and contraction of the capsule. Here you can see a normal joint capsule. The capsule is elastic and allows for great range of motion. When inflammation and thickening of the shoulder capsule occur, it may lead to adhesive capsulitis. Here you can see a patient example of adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder. A patient with frozen shoulder will have loss of both active and passive motion. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.